Today I'll be showing you how to install GNU Linux onto your Windows laptop. Now there's a number of reasons that you might want to do this, such as increasing the privacy and security of your computer, getting a better computing experience overall, because let's be honest, Windows 10 is pretty trash, but probably one of the best reasons, especially if you're using older hardware like this ThinkPad W500, is to actually get decent performance, because as you can see, Windows just eats up your CPU, it also eats up your RAM, and literally all I have open is Microsoft Edge, we don't have to deal with this kind of nonsense in GNU Linux. So all you need to get started is obviously a computer, an internet connection, and a flash drive that you don't mind formatting and wiping all of the data off of it. Uh, you don't need a really big one either. You only need one that's got about four gigabytes of space, and that should be enough for 99% of the Linux distros out there. Now, if you're new to the world of Linux, you've probably made a search query like this in your favorite search engine before. What is the best Linux distro for beginners? And you probably got results like this one here from It's Foss, where it's an article that goes over the top 10 or top 20 or whatever uh, best distributions. And they almost get it right. They actually listed the best distro for beginners as number two, which is Linux Mint. Now, the reason that this one is so good for beginners is primarily because it's laid out very similarly to Windows and how it looks. You can even, uh, you might be able to see on the camera here that it's got a little start menu down here in the lower left-hand corner, just like on Windows. It's got your taskbar at the bottom, just like Windows, with your time and uh, network connection over here on the right-hand side, and then your apps over here on the left-hand side. So it's gonna be very, very familiar if Windows is what you're coming from. So we'll go ahead over to linuxmint.com and head over to download. And then we're going to download the ISO file for Linux Mint. Now there's a few different editions that are here. The only difference is the desktop environment, uh, which is basically like the theme, like sort of how it's going to look. Um, the functionalities are going to be the same between all of them. Start menu is going to be in the bottom uh, for all of them. Uh, what I would recommend is the XFCE desktop because this uses the least amount of CPU and RAM out of these three. So let's go ahead and download that. Uh, and then you can just download it from whichever mirror you want. And we'll wait for that to download. Okay, Linux Mint has finished downloading. Now, if you're using a newer computer or just a higher spec computer, basically quad core and 16 gigabytes or more of RAM, uh, you might want to consider downloading and installing VirtualBox and then installing Linux Mint in there first. Uh, basically, this is going to let you run Linux Mint on top of Windows in a virtual machine, and then that way you can sort of try it out. Uh, just know that doing this inside of a virtual machine, the performance is not going to be as good because you're emulating anything. You're literally running a, another operating system on top of Windows. So uh, what I would really recommend doing is just to get into uh, flashing Linux Mint to your USB and then you can boot it live and try it out right on your hardware without actually wiping Windows out and uh, deleting all of your files. Uh, so to create that bootable USB drive, we're going to use a program called Rufus from rufus.ie. Uh, and this is going to turn this flash drive into a Linux Mint bootable flash drive uh, so that we can boot off of it. Sort of like, uh, you know, if you remember how operating systems were installed back in the day, you did it from a disc or like a CD, DVD drive. Uh, we're going to do the same thing off of USB. It's much faster and plus a lot of laptops these days don't even have DVD drives. So let's go ahead and download Rufus and install it. All right, and then we're going to plug in our USB drive. 
Okay, and right here is uh, my 64 gigabyte USB drive. Again, you don't need to use one this big. Uh, if you have literally four gigabytes is gonna be enough. Um, and then it wants us to select our disk or ISO image. So hit select. And then it's gonna open up your file manager. It already pointed to downloads, which is where Linux Mint XFCE is. Uh, so now here, uh, choosing the partition scheme, this is going to depend on uh, sort of how new your computer is. Uh, if it's an older one, like this W500, then you're probably going to want to use MBR. Uh, if it's newer, then you might want to use GPT. Uh, but I'm going to stick to MBR because this is more compatible in general on computers. Uh, pretty much everything is going to support that, but not all of them support GPT. Uh, and file system, also a good idea to just go with FAT32 because that's also supported by pretty much every computer. Uh, so go ahead and hit start and uh, write it in ISO large mode and hit yes. And this is going to take a little while and of course format all of the data off of the USB. So like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, use one that you don't mind the data getting deleted off of. Okay, our drive has finished formatting and getting Linux Mint Flash to it, so now we are able to boot from it. And let's go ahead and reboot Windows into Linux Mint. Okay, so we are here at the Welcome to Linux Mint screen. Uh, depending on your boot configuration, you may have to change the boot order to make it so that your computer actually tries to boot from USB before it uh, boots from the hard drive. Uh, so let me show you how to do that in case uh, this screen doesn't come up on your restart. Okay, so here I am in the BIOS setup utility. Uh, in order to get here, you might have to press something like Escape or F12 or F10 when the computer is first starting up. Usually it'll tell you on the screen uh, very briefly before it tries to boot your operating system. Uh, so in case it goes directly into Windows, we just have to change uh, some things in the startup. Uh, boot mode, you might need to change this uh, from fast boot or removing uh, fast boot or very fast boot if you're using a newer uh, BIOS. And you also need to change the boot priority uh, to make it so that your USB uh, hard drive is the first thing, uh, or at the very least it's before any uh, ATA or SATA hard drives, because that is going to be the disk, the actual solid state or hard disk drive uh, that you have Windows installed to. Uh, so once you have that changed, go ahead and save the changes and exit. All right, and now you're on the Linux Mint welcome screen with the rest of us. So go ahead and start Linux Mint. And 
here you are booted into a live version of Linux Mint. So this is something really cool that you can do on Linux that you can't do on Windows, uh, running it in a live mode. So we don't actually have Linux Mint installed. Everything is just running off of the flash drive that's plugged into our computer. Of course, it's using our CPU and RAM, but none of your file systems have been modified yet. Windows is still there. All of your files are still there. Uh, so you can go ahead and start browsing Linux Mint to see what it's actually like um, when you start up Firefox, which is the default browser, a much better browser than Microsoft Edge. Uh, it brings you to uh, linuxmint.com where you can see uh, some different news articles about Linux Mint. You can very quickly go to the blog and start reading up about it. It kind of puts you in the right direction of things that you might want to try out uh, within this operating system. So go ahead and try it out. Give it a test drive on your hardware. And if you really like it, you can go ahead and get started with installing it. So to start installing Linux Mint, simply double click on the install Linux Mint icon here on your desktop. And here we have a nice little installer that's going to walk us through the process. So you can choose the language that you want to use. And then you can also choose your keyboard layout. By default, it's going to be English US. And then you have the option to install multimedia codecs. Uh, so this is going to install some proprietary codecs uh, that might be necessary to play uh, some non-free video formats and to properly render some websites. I would suggest installing this uh, because, of course, certain websites and uh, certain videos are not going to work without it. And now we can choose the installation type. Uh, so by default, Linux Mint is going to prompt you to install it alongside Windows 10. Uh, so this way, it's not going to remove any of your personal files, uh, and it's not going to delete Windows. You'll be able to boot into either Windows 10 or Linux Mint on your computer. So this is the option that I would recommend doing if you haven't already uh, backed up any of your files, and if you're not really sure or confident uh, in wiping out Windows 10 and just using Linux, but I know that you are a brave soul. So we're gonna go ahead and erase the disk and install Linux Mint. Okay, and then choose your time zone. I'm on the East Coast, so New York will work fine. And then you can enter in your username. And then here it's going to uh, automatically choose a computer name for you. I think I'm going to uh, just change this a little bit. There we go. And then you choose a password that you want to use. And by default, it's going to uh, require your password to log in, but you could choose it to log in automatically if you wanted. You also have the option of encrypting your home folder. So uh, your home folder is similar to your users folder in Windows. This is where all of your pictures, your documents, your downloads, uh, music, and things like that are going to be saved to by default. Uh, I would highly recommend encrypting your home folder so that uh, if your laptop, if you take it out and about and then somebody were to steal it, they're not able to actually get any information uh, or at least any of your personal information out of that home folder.
All right, the installation has finished. Let's go ahead and restart into Linux Mint on our hard drive. Okay, so go ahead and remove the flash drive and press enter. And here we are at the login screen for Linux Mint. Go ahead and enter your password. And already you can probably notice that this is starting up faster than Windows starts up uh, on your PC. I know mine looks a little slow, but again, remember, mine's a W500. Uh, Windows takes minutes <laughs> for my desktop to load on this computer. So yeah, most of the applications that you would want to use are already installed. And let's see how the performance is. So why don't we uh, open up LibreOffice Writer and let's also open up Firefox and let's get a couple of tabs going. Maybe we have a uh, YouTube tab open and maybe we also have a uh, Spotify tab open as well. And, uh, you know, maybe Amazon as well. Let's get the full consumer setup going. Uh, we got LibreOffice Writer. Let's also open LibreOffice Calc. And let's also open uh, a calculator. Sure, maybe you're, like, trying to do your taxes or accounting all at the same time. And uh, now let's open up our task manager. Let's see how much uh, CPU and RAM is being used. Oh, look at that. Less than half. Less than half of the CPU on a Core 2 Duo and only about 25% uh, of my memory, it looks like. 26%, yeah, 2 gigabytes out of um, 8 gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, computer is much, much snappier now that we have some free software installed. So as always, I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to like, comment, and share to hack the algorithm. Peace out.